happy new year. Today, right now, is the start of my first full working day with my baby in childcare for like the full day. Ah! So, I wanted to talk to you about some of my New Year's resolutions, but first I also need to tidy up his toys. Got to do that before we left, but let's chat. New Year's resolutions seem to be a bit of a mom, I think, for people. Love them or hate them. I traditionally have been a love them kind of person, and I definitely still am like a resolutions kind of person. I love setting goals. I love kind of like marking the beginning and end of things, and I find it a useful time to kind of reflect, although, you know, it's not necessary, but can be useful. I wanted to make some resolutions this year because our routine is changing because now my baby is doing full days three a week at his childminders and so that means our routine is changing my work routine is changing lots of stuff is happening and so i felt like i wanted to go into this year with a bit of intentionality if that's possible as a working mum i wanted to kind of like set my intentions for the year of like if i get the chance to do some of the things that i want to do this would be what i want to do does that make sense <laughs> get this out of the way oh my god donk, 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 donk. my brain is already not working i wanted to make this video though so that i can hold myself accountable to these things there we go did i do it <gasps> yay come with me so i have split these resolutions into categories and i will say most of them are actually things that i want to continue doing so it's like this is working this is great so let's not stop that let's continue that into this year and then there are some that are like new things that are potentially going to be a bit tricky <laughs> we'll see i'm like scared of failing these but not failing these you'll see you'll see but the categories are me so that is just like me hannah the personal stuff and then we have a whole category for evening routine because it's a thing that time is precious after rowan has gone to bed and i wanted to set some resolutions around it and then there's some baby related stuff and some work related stuff and thank you so much to skin and me for sponsoring this video more about them later but let's get into the me resolutions because really it is all about me. Number one. So normally my first resolution is a reading goal of the number of books that I want to have read in that year. However, this year we are not setting a goal. We're not setting a number. But my resolution is I want to get better at tracking on Storygraph. I usually do track like every book I read on there, but I want to start including all of the children's books that I'm reading. I won't include rereads of them, but I will at least mark all of the ones that I'm reading. And then the other thing is that making sure like that the format is correct because I've been reading a lot of audiobooks and I've now started tracking audiobooks in terms of minutes listened instead of it converting it to the pages. So I get a really funky graph like this, which is my 2022 reading with books and pages and minutes. And whew, you can see right up at the the end there the way of kings that 45 hour -er. excellent so i don't want to put any pressure on myself for the number of books that i'm reading parenting and reading just really do not go hand in hand for me at the moment but the books that i do read i want to track properly and then have like a beautiful 2023 story graph wrap up of all of my reading my second resolution is to continue with doing one second a day. So I use the one second a day app and film bits of my life and then it takes one second a day and I did it for the entirety of last year, except one day I missed the 17th of February. Curse that day, curse that day. It is just such a wonderful video of like the first year of us becoming parents and Rowan. I mean, it is mostly Rowan from May onwards, but I definitely wanna do it again this year. However, this year I'm going portrait instead of landscape and we'll see how that goes. 
<laughs> but I'm very excited. My third resolution is related to these bad boys. These are five year diaries and these two are full. This is 10 years of my life from 2013 all the way through to the end of 2022, from second year of uni to moving to London, to meeting Dan, having a baby, like, oh my God. This is my new one that Dan got me for Christmas. As you can see, this is how it works. Um, oh my God, I opened it up onto April 30th, which is Rowan's birthday, wow. So yeah, this is how it works. And you put in the date and then on that day, you write what you did and you can see what you're doing for like five years in a row, but for me, 10 years, soon to be 15. But what is my resolution around this? I don't need to set a resolution about keeping this because this is clearly a habit that is already very much ingrained in me. The resolution is related to one of my goals. You may have seen in my 2023 goals video in that I want to do something with this, transcribe it, and then like run some code or put it into some AI machine and be like, how many times did I see first aid kit in 10 years? Or like, make it spit out fictional diary entries like based on my tone of voice. Anyway, I wanna ask it questions, I wanna make it do fun things, we'll see. Step one is transcribing the last 10 years of my life, but I have actually started doing it and I have chopped it up into bite-sized chunks. So I actually have like a concrete resolution, a habit that I need to keep up in order to do this. So my goal is to finish transcribing them by Rowan's birthday, which is the 30th of April. <laughs> and I've already started this, so I know that it takes me about 15 minutes to transcribe one day, i.e. like 10 years of the same day. So it takes me about an hour 45 to two hours to transcribe an entire week. And I did some calculating and I created a tracker in Notion. Am I a stereotype of myself? Am I a stereotype of myself? Let me show you my tracker for transcribing my five-year diaries. Dan takes the piss out of me. He's just like, you want to relax, but you create more work for yourself. And I'm like, I don't know what you're talking about. Here is my five-year diaries progress tracker. So I've got my little table doing the calculations. So we have week commencing this week, week commencing the 2nd of Jan. How many diary weeks are left? 43. How many actual weeks left? That's until the 30th of April. And then it runs this little calculation of how many weeks I need to transcribe per week. Currently at about 2.5 and I know that it takes me two hours to transcribe a week. So I just double that five hours a week. That's a lot. I am not expecting to get this done by Rowan's birthday, but I'm setting this goal for myself to just get some of it done so that I create a habit for it and then it will get done at some point. Ideally before like the midpoint of the year would be good. But then here below my progress tracker is like the list of all of the weeks so that I can keep track in that way. And the reason why it says 2029 is because I was not going to type out every single week, but in order to get it to say week one, January 1st, week two, January 8th, I had to find a year where the year starts on a Monday and then I just copied and pasted the dates. Life hack. <laughs> So if you happen to ever wonder, what's Hannah up to right now? I'm probably transcribing <laughs> my five year diaries if I'm not parenting or working. Like, I bet I'm doing this. <laughs> what fun. My final me resolution is about staying active. So now that we've got this new routine, one of the main baby fitness classes that I was doing, I can't do anymore because I'm gonna be working. So it's about finding something else. I'm not setting a strict resolution for myself right now, but I wanna figure it out. Obviously I walk a lot with Rowan and carry him a lot. And so that's great, but I wanna figure out like, is there other baby fitness classes that I can do? Also like maybe when spring comes, do I start tennis again? The idea of it is just like thrilling to me. And then the other thing that I have been flirting with the idea of doing again is park run, which if you didn't know, is like a free 5K that is in loads of different parks all over the UK. Maybe in other countries as well. I don't know, but definitely all across the UK. And there's one near us and I used to do it all of the time and it's on a Saturday morning. And maybe that's something that I start doing again. I don't know, but basically I wanna figure it out, but hopefully nothing outside when the weather's like this. So now on to some evening routine resolutions. So my first goal in this category is about having intentional evenings. Now, 
this might sound really vague, but essentially most nights, most nights, I don't wanna jinx it, Rowan will go to bed maybe like seven, 8 p.m. And then I tend to not go to bed until 9.30, 10. And I want to spend those few hours that I have, that Dan and I have, intentionally because sometimes what happens is Rowan goes to bed and I'm so exhausted and then I just jump on my phone and I start mindlessly scrolling on the sofa just chilling out and then the next thing I know I'm like ah I should really go to bed what have I actually done with this time <laughs> that I had to myself and so I want to get like a really clear sense of if Rowan stays asleep if he lets us actually have an evening what do I want to do with that time and yes, you might be thinking, uh, Hannah, you need to crack on with transcribing those five-year diaries. You would be correct. There will definitely be some evenings where I'm like, okay, this is what I'm gonna do. Other than that, it's things like, what TV shows do I actually wanna watch? Like right now, His Dark Materials, the final season. Oh my goodness, I'm like two episodes in. I am very excited to watch another episode of that one evening this week. Obviously like hanging out with Dan, either watching something together or maybe, God forbid, playing a board game, maybe. <laughs> or just chilling out on the sofa and reading a physical book. Pfft, like, honestly, wow, what? <laughs> the thing is though, sometimes I'm just going to want to be on my phone and that's fine as long as I kind of do that intentionally, you know, like go, okay, I'm gonna have 15 minutes to just scroll and then I'm gonna do this other thing. Is this goal too vague? Is it made with the best of intentions of like, oh yes, I'm going to not be productive with my evenings, but actually just like feel fulfilled. <laughs> by my evenings instead of just like, oh, I just spent an hour and a half on my phone and now I have to go to bed. We will see, but I think it will be really important for my overall well-being and sense of self, you know? So, welcome to my bathroom for my second evening routine resolution. Um, this brings us after the evening has been had and it is now time for bed. And this is my like bedtime, nighttime routine. And as I said, this video is sponsored by Skin and Me. And this is one of those resolutions that is just upkeep. I have been doing this. I've been using Skin and Me for like four months now. I just love it as part of my nighttime routine of like the winding down and getting into bed. So Skin and Me is personalized and tailored to your skin and goals. And it is designed by dermatologists. I am not wearing any makeup and I have maybe worn makeup like three or four times since Rowan has been born and there's been a definite shift in how I feel about makeup and also like how I feel about my skin, not just with parenting but also like throughout the pandemic and stuff as well. But I have never been more confident in my skin and feeling comfortable to go out into the world without any makeup on. Like even before when I was maybe not wearing makeup day to day, I would still put makeup on to film YouTube videos. And now I'm just like, nah, <laughs> I don't need to do that. I don't feel like that's something that I have to do anymore because it definitely felt that way for me. But I've never felt more confident in my own skin at the moment that I don't care about having my bare face out there and of course it's really important for me to look after my skin but i need something that is really simple and really convenient so introducing skin and me's daily doser da, 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 da. look it even says for hannah on it so this is designed by a member of the dermatology team and one of the wonderful things about it is that you know exactly how much to use each day so you just do a little ding, 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 click and it comes out and that's how much you use on your face. So there is no product wastage and you know exactly how much you need. Also a new one of these is sent out and delivered before your last one runs out. The convenience of it, we love that. Also it comes in recyclable packaging and as I said, I need something simple and this is just such a simple part of my evening routine. Like I come in here, I wash my face, I put this on and I brush my teeth and I go to the toilet whilst I let it soak in and settle in and then I put on some night moisturizer and then bedtime. 
So I have a special code for you. You can click the link in the description and use the code HANNAH01Y and you'll receive your first daily doser for £3.50 and they are usually £24.99. So thank you so much to Skin and Me for sponsoring this video. I'm very excited to continue my evening skincare routine into 2023. It's been working wonders for me the last four months and I would highly recommend. Okay, so number three is maybe my hardest resolution. Like I'm gonna need help and tips and tricks on how to do this and how to build this habit. Now, if you'll have seen the Hormone Diaries episode all about my sex life and relationship post having a baby, you all know having some issues with uh, penetration. And I've been to see a few specialists and I have been given some exercises to do. Have I done them? I have not. But 2023 is the year. This one is the most tricky because it's about setting aside five to 10 minutes every day, ideally. Probably in the evening as part of my intentional evening routine. But there's just that little bit more friction to do it than some of the other things in my evening routine because it's gonna involve probably taking my clothes off, involving Dan, but not always involving Dan, not necessary, but would be nice. Being in a really relaxed state of mind and having somewhere comfortable to lie and sit in privacy when the baby is asleep in the bedroom. Like this would be the ideal place to do those exercises and, you know, experiment and do all those things. But it's about like, okay, so then do we use the sofa or like the spare bed in the office? So it just, it just feels like there's a lot of friction to this. Dan and I have both said that the end result is really important to us, but the actual like work that we have to put in to get there, we're both just like, I can't be bothered. But one, I have my accountability buddy, which is Dan, because he has an investment in this too, even though it's just my body. I feel like I need some more help on like, how the hell do I build this habit? Like, how do we reduce the friction? How do we make it something that like we want to do? But essentially, in its most simple terms, one of the things is just the breathing. And the breathing I am doing, and I do that like just regularly, like when I'm falling asleep or like when I'm relaxing in front of the telly, I just like make sure I do the breathing and the, like the releasing and the relaxing of my pelvic floor. Like that I can do anytime, anywhere. But ideally we want to get to a place where there is penetration, whether that's with like a toy, I have a little device thing as well. And then I am doing my breathing during that as well. Cause the pelvic floor physiotherapist like properly was like, it's like getting out a knot. You know when you're like really tight in your shoulder and you're just like kneading out a knot, it's like my vagina is full of knots. Anyway, this, all the detail of this will be for a future episode of The Hormone Diaries, but I'm just putting it out there that it is a resolution of mine to build a habit around doing my exercises. Breathing, a lot of like massaging the outside here. So all of that can be done clothed, but then there's the internal stuff, which is where we're gonna struggle. <laughs> but that's kind of the important stuff as well. This is my weird little device thing that the pelvic floor physiotherapist told me to get. So you can use this to like massage points inside your vagina, loosen it up, just like <clears throat> get in there. Medical lubricant. Wow. Is this just like the stuff that they use for a smear test? What fun. Welcome to the ensuite for the fourth evening resolution and this is also health related it's something that i already have like somewhat of a habit of but i often forget and so i want to kind of really hold myself accountable to remembering to do my bum pellets this is a little steroid rectal suppository that I need for my inflamed rectum. And I would say I do these a few times a week, but I really need to be doing it every night because health. But my symptoms have actually been pretty good lately, but I have been remembering to do these more. So 2023, remember to do these more. Unfortunately, I only get 20 of them in every prescription. So part of the resolution is getting on that medical admin and making sure to get my repeat prescriptions because it's acute medication. You can't do it repeat and I have to like call up the GP every time. Oh. Boring medical admin, but saves my butthole. So good stuff. Okay, now on to some of the baby resolutions. Ooh, cute little baby. 
So my first baby resolution is to get real comfortable and confident with this carrier. This is a Christmas present from Dan. It can do baby outward facing, baby inward facing. And the main one, the main thing that my resolution is about is the back carry because I feel like the back carry with Rowan is going to be where our future is at really because he is so big and my torso is not very long so when I have him on my front his head is like here and I'm like I'm not getting any bigger but he is and so I feel like getting him on my back more often is going to obviously like free up so much that I'm able to do but also he can get bigger and it doesn't make it harder. Like I'm only gonna be able to keep him on my front in the carrier for a little while longer. I don't know how much longer, but on the back, we're good to go until like, I don't know what, he's two, three years old. Although that'll kill my back. But the other reason why this is a resolution and I want to get practicing with my carrier is because he's big, he's heavy. He's only gonna get bigger and heavier and I want to get strong with him. Hi ho, hi ho, it's off to work we go. But basically, front carrying, I've got that down. I feel really confident with that. I've carried him on my back in this carrier once or twice now, but both with assistance from Dan in getting it on and getting him in. So my resolution specifically is to practice enough with the back carry that I become really confident with it and I find it really easy and la 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 la. You understand. My second baby resolution is another vague one. We love a vague resolution. And that is to get into a good routine on my days off with Rowan. This is mostly for my own sanity. And by routine, I don't necessarily mean like his nap and feeding routine. That is just going to be whatever it is and it is constantly changing. I mean more in terms of like activities that we do and like plans that we make so that I don't go mad sitting around with a baby for a full day. The flip side of getting really excited about doing full days of work means that I now have full days with Rowan. Sounds like I'm like, oh God, I have to hang out with my own baby. I love him dearly, but other parents will know a full day of trying to entertain a small person is hard and having other things to do is excellent. I didn't want to book loads of activities and like set a really strict routine before we started this routine because you know, we're settling in. It's going to be evolving slowly and we'll figure it out as we go, but I'm excited. There's a new baby carrying bar class nearby. So like doing like bar, like ballet bar, but the baby is <laughs> attached to you. We'll see if Rowan will tolerate that, we'll see. And then I also saw recently that the same place is gonna have like a, a mama dance fitness class. I mean, that sounds great. And obviously if I can bring Rowan and I can like dance with Rowan, either like he can be strapped to me or as he starts getting mobile and walking around, then he can like join in. How cute would that be? Oh my God. So there's lots of options and I'm excited to explore. I have to say, like this new blanket and my top, I'm really into this, I'm digging it. And finally, some work resolutions. Okay, so resolution number one is about work reading because this is something that I just had no time to do after I came back to work after maternity leave. And it's something that I really want to prioritize during my working hours because I'm not gonna be able to do it outside of that. I need to refill the well. And essentially I want to block out some time for work reading at least once a week. Oh, is that too much? Is that too much? Like, will that even be possible? I don't know. Once again, we're easing into this new routine and we're gonna see what is possible as we go. The other thing, maybe this is really optimistic of me, is that now that I've got full days of work, maybe I'll like get all of my work done before I have to go and pick up Rowan because I've become super efficient <laughs> since having a baby. And so then maybe at the end of my work day, I'll have time to do some reading. I grabbed some books from my studio because I do spend most of my work time here at home rather than at the studio. And so this is probably where I'll do most of my reading. And so these are kind of like the books I'm gonna be prioritizing. 
We have Magnificent Sex. This was recommended by Emily Nagoski. Lessons from Extraordinary Lovers. The Psychology of Sex by Meg John Barker. This is on my list because I think it's got some specific stuff in it that I need to research for a video. But also it seems to be a really great like 101 on a lot of like sex psychology stuff. So excited. Then we have Forever on my TBR, Pleasure Activism, The Politics of Feeling Good, which is written and gathered by Adrienne Marie Brown. It's got loads of essays in. This has just come highly recommended from so, so many people. Then we have Mating and Captivity by Esther Perel, big Esther Perel fan. And I did actually start this book, as you can see. I think I got into the introduction. It's been so long since I've smelt a book. Oh. This is a part work intellectual read, but also part personal read, because I feel like a lot of the stuff that she talks about in this book will apply to the stage that my and Dan's relationship is in right now. And then finally, I actually bought this one recently, The Transgender Issue, An Argument for Justice by Sean Fay. This has just become highly recommended from so many different people. I'm really excited to dive in. This is the paperback and actually it's a lot smaller <laughs> than I was expecting. So I'm kind of expecting to this to be like a short packs a punch, really gets to the point about transgender issues and trans rights. Excited to read. Read the sex books, Heather, read the sex books. And then my second work related resolution is to keep up to date with YouTube videos. I am a YouTuber. I love YouTube. It is like my home platform. I watch so much YouTube for entertainment, but also just for learning, but I just haven't had the time to watch any of it. And I'm counting this as a work goal because I do feel like there's a lot that I can gain from being more immersed in the platform in terms of trends, in terms of what people are talking about, in terms of like inspiration for my own videos. La 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 la, you get me. My watch later playlist, because the way that I use YouTube is that I will look at my subscriptions and look at my homepage and then like add things to watch later of like what I want to actually watch. And then when I actually have the time and I want to sit down and watch some YouTube videos, I go to my watch later playlist and go from there. So it currently has 315 videos in it. So my plan is to, at some point, somehow make a dent in this. I have been able to like watch some YouTube whilst transcribing my 10 year diaries, but it has to be more like background YouTube rather than focus YouTube, which is fine. I can still get a lot in. So I want to make a dent in my watch later players and then also somehow manage to keep on top of new releases at some point. Like the top one on my watch later playlist is my friend Lena's video from four months ago. <laughs> Yay. <laughs> so there we have it. Those are my resolutions for 2023. Now that I've said them all out loud, I'm like, is this too much? Am I being too ambitious? What am I even thinking? <laughs> we will see, we will see. Everything is in constant flux, everything changes. Are you a resolutions kind of person? Are you making any this year? What are they? If you care to share in the comments and thanks again to Skin and Me for sponsoring this video. If you click the link in the description and use my code HANNAH01Y, then you can get your first daily dose for £3.50, which are usually £24.99. Thank you so much for watching and happy new year. I wish you all of the best with your plans and your goals and your resolutions. We can do this. It's gonna be a good year. I can feel it. <laughs> Bye.